Hi, and welcome to our series of educational videos that are designed to make you a smarter gambler. My name is Steve Borey, and I'm the author of the American Casino Guide, which is the number one best-selling book in the U.S. on the subject of casino gambling and travel, and the only book that comes with more than $1,000 in casino coupons. If you want to know more about me or my book, be sure to visit my website at AmericanCasinoGuide.com. In this video, we'll be hearing from nationally syndicated gaming writer John Grahowski, and he'll be answering some of the most common questions that players have about slot machines. Besides his gaming column, John has also written five books about gambling, including the very popular slot machine answer book. John has appeared on three Travel Channel specials about casino gambling, and he also writes monthly articles for several gaming-related magazines. I'm sure you'll learn some great tips from John on how slot machines work, and now, here's John Grahowski. You know, players ask me all the time just how slot machines work, and modern slot machines are all entirely computerized. There are no more mechanical slot machines where uh, you could, it was a clockwork type thing, and the number of symbols on each reel were what determined the odds of the game. Today, everything is run through a random number generator, and it doesn't matter whether it's a three reel slot machine or a video slot machine with five reels, any configuration, it's all computerized. A random number generator selects random numbers that correspond to real symbols, and that determines whether you win or lose on a slot machine. You know, some players still think that real slots give you a better shot to win than, than video slots. I get email about that all the time, the people who just don't trust the video games. And really, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the both run on a random num number generator. You can program. Whether it's a video slot or a real slot, a programmer can program any payback percentage in it within legal limits. Uh, it, one is not more fair than the other. It's not uh, necessarily a bigger payback percentage on one than the other. All I would caution is that in casinos today, as has almost always been the case, higher denomination machines do pay higher percentages than lower denomination machines. So whereas most video slot machines are lower denominations, therefore have lower payback percentages. So in, in that sense, it makes a difference. But a programmer can program any kind of machine to have any payback percentage. I had a long correspondence with a player recently. We kind of went back and forth on, on just how random number generators work and what's legal on slot machines and what's not. And one of the things he brought up was that he wanted to know if a machine is programmed to pay a certain, certain percentage, does that mean that it can't pay anything out until there's already money in the bank. And uh, that's not the way it works. You know, the, the slot machine can pay any jackpot, any amount, at any time. In the long run, it's going to hit its targeted payback percentage. And it does it because of the odds of the game, not because it has to go in any makeup mode or because it has to hit a certain target payback percentage. The programmer just sets the odds of the game. And over a very long time, the odds of the game will make the machine gravitate toward that targeted payback percentage. It doesn't have to go into any makeup time. It could hit the top jackpot on the very first spin. That's possible. If that does happen, it doesn't have to make that up on the succeeding spins. It's just that over a long time, that top jackpot will fade away into statistical insignificance, and it'll hit its targeted payback percentage. You know, another thing players wonder about a lot is whether all slot machines are regulated by gaming authorities and whether there's a required minimum payback percentage. And they're not all regulated. That's, that's the thing. You need to look uh, for jurisdictions where the slots are regulated. I mean, for traditionally, for years, there have been slot machines in bars that weren't supposed to be there. And in Chicago, where I'm from, that's a, that's a big to-do, you know, getting rid of unregulated slot machines, unregulated video poker machines. Uh, in jurisdictions where the casinos are licensed, in licensed casinos, you know, then they are regulated. The random number generators are checked. The chips for every game have to be checked by the gaming boards. Uh, but you have to, have to be a little bit careful. You can't just walk into any bar that, that's not a licensed casino and expect that the, the game is going to be regulated like that. In licensed casinos, every state has its own minimum payback percentages. In Nevada, I think, what is it, 75 percent. In Illinois, it's 80 percent. In uh, Indiana, it's 82 percent. So there are minimums in all regulated jurisdictions. Some of them also have maximums. 
You know, Nevada doesn't have a maximum. In Illinois, no slot machine may be, have a theoretical payback of more than 100%. And that limits the, the certain video poker games that they can put in the casinos in Illinois. But every jurisdiction that licenses casinos has minimum payback percentages. You know, some people ask specifically about Indian casinos. Are Indian casinos have regulated? Do they have minimum payback percentages? And that's dependent on the compact that they negotiate with the state. You know, the Indian casinos are in sovereign nations. The Indian tribes are sovereign nations. They regulate themselves, more or less, but they do have to negotiate a con compact with the governor of the state before they build the casino and start operating. So just what the minimum payback percentage is depends on the compact that's negotiated between the tribe and the governor of the state. Players often wonder if a casino can change the payback percentage on a slot machine after the machine's already on the floor. They might have a game that initially is programmed as a 96% game. Can they change it to a 92% game? Well, yes, they can change the payback percentage, but it's not done routinely because with today's slot machines, it would require changing out a chip, you know, changing the random number generator chip, uh, changing the interior workings of the slot machine. That can be done. In most jurisdictions, what it requires is that the slot machine be opened up, evidence take be broken, the chip taken out, new chip uh, placed in, new evidence placed in, the machine closed up and locked, and a gaming board agent sign off on it. It's a complicated process. It's not something that the casino is going to do routinely. They will do it sometimes. But it's, it's not done all the time. It's not a day or night thing or a week or weekend thing. Some players have asked me about that. You know, do, do slots pay different on weekends than on weekdays? They don't. They can't change it that routinely. Now, in the future, it's going to become possible to do that as server-based gaming comes into play. You know, when the games are going to reside on a server, you're going to, the casino is going to be able, at the click of a mouse, to change the game, change the payback percentage, provided they clear it with a gaming board. Not all the processes have been written for this yet. But for right now, the games you're seeing in casinos, most casinos in the United States, you cannot routinely change the payback percentage on a slot machine. One thing that nearly all slot players seem to be confused about, I get asked this all the time, if a slot machine is programmed to be random, if they're supposed to act randomly, how is it that they can be programmed for a certain payback percentage? And the answer here is that the programmer sets the odds of the game, just as a game designer, you could call him a programmer, sets the odds of the game in a table game. It's the same thing in roulette. You have 38 numbers, uh, a single number bet was going to win about once per 38 times. It uh, pays 35 to 1, and that leads to a 5.2% per per house edge. It's programmed, you see, with 38 numbers, and then the possibilities flow randomly from that. It's the same thing in a slot machine. The programmer programs the symbols so that they will occur a certain amount of times that will lead to a payback percentage in the long run. It doesn't have to happen now, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow, but the odds of the game that are programmed, as long as the game remains random, will lead to that targeted payback percentage. Way back when I first started writing about gaming, well, oh, 17 years ago now, I got letters by snail mail, we got snail mail in those days, asking me what the difference was between hit frequency and payback percentage, because I'd write both about both of them at the time. And people still ask about it now and then. What is the difference between hit frequency and payback percentage. Hit frequency is the percentage of winning spins, and payback percentage is the overall percentage of money played that's paid back to players. You know, it's different. For example, on a three-reel slot machine, you can have a game that with a hit frequency of 12%. You know, on 12% of spins, you're going to get something back. That same game can have a payback percentage of 90% or 95% or any number of percent, depending on how it's programmed, what the paybacks uh, are worth. So uh, hit frequency is the percentage of winning spins. Payback percentage is the percentage of money that's paid back to you. You know, one of the new trends, one of the things that's coming 
to casinos. Uh, it's not in every casino yet. It's not in most casinos yet. Is server-based gaming. And I've written about this, and people immediately ask, you know, what is server-based gaming? Is this something that's just for video slots, or can it be real slots too? Server-based gaming is going to be enable the games to reside on a server rather than at the individual game. The Casinos are going to be able to change games at a click of a mouse. They'll be able to change payback percentages at the click of the mouse. They'll also be able to have two-way interaction with players. One of the big things that is called a server window in which a casino that wants to make a special offer to a player can open the server window on the screen of the slot machine and say, hey, we have extra tickets to the show tonight. You do want to go. And they can do targeted promotions that way. The player can also interact with the casino, order their drinks or make reservations, whatever, in the server window. That's all coming. It is not necessarily only for video slot machines. Now, IGT last year started showing some real spinning slot machines that had Underneath the window with the reels was a long but, long but not deep video screen where they could bring up the server window and have those same kind of interactions with the players. So the game was still being played on three reels or five reels, but you also had the server window for the two-way interaction. Uh, that's coming. They, it's more difficult to program a slot machine with uh, variable payback percentages and uh, variable types games from a remote location, but it can be done. It, uh, all they have to do is have the program so that at the click of the mouse, it the, changes the hit frequency or it changes the pay table. Um, and you can do this so that you can change real spinning games as well as you can video games. Now, Players do have some wariness about server-based slot machines. They wonder, you know, are, are the casino going to be able to change the payback percentage while I'm playing? As if I sat down at a 96% game, is it suddenly going to be an 88% game while I'm playing? And that is up to the regulators to make sure the systems are in place that that's not going to happen. In Nevada, the way that's working is that before a game is changed out, there has to be a four-minute period where the, casino, where the casino is flashing a message on the screen that says, this game is going to change. And then after it changes, there has to be another four-minute player in which the screen says, this game has changed. So there's actually eight minutes, and the machine has to be sitting empty. Now, they can't change the pay table, change the payback percentage while you are playing. They have to wait until the game is empty, then flash these messages for eight minutes before they can actually go ahead and change the game. Now, it seems like we've been talking about the coming of server-based gaming forever. It's been the next big thing for four or five years now, but regulators have been slow to approve it. So one thing I get asked is, how widespread is server-based gaming? Are there any jurisdictions where it's just not available? And it's not that widespread yet. You know, Nevada has it. You know, the ARIA opened up with it. But not every casino in Nevada has it. In fact, most don't. Uh, California has had uh, field tests with it. There are pockets of places with server-based games. Some jurisdictions have not approved it yet. Illinois has not approved it. Indiana has not approved it. Uh, there are a number of jurisdictions where these games just are not available even if the operators wanted to buy it. That's going to change. Not going to change overnight, but you're going to see server-based gaming in increasing proportions over the years. And slot machines are the most popular games in casinos, and so players ask questions all the time about slots and how they work and what to play. Every now and then somebody will come to me with the one that leaves it open-ended for me. You know, what is your best advice for slot machines? And the best advice I can offer is to play them for fun, enjoy the wins that, when they come, but to stay within your bankroll. Don't be playing dollar slot machines when you have a nickel slot player's budget. Don't be betting money that you can't afford to lose. Now, the games can be fun, the jackpots are a riot, the bonus, uh, bonus rounds you know, can be a blast. Have fun with all that, but don't be betting money you can't afford to lose. Play for fun and leave it at that. If you want to know more about me and my work, you can check out my books, the Casino Answer Book, the Slot Machine Answer Book, the Video Poker Answer Book. You can find me every month in Midwest Gaming and Travel Magazine. You can find me most months in Strictly Slots and Casino Player. You can find me every week on Casino City Times, and you can check out my website, CasinoAnswerMan.com. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.